Hello. How is everybody? Pat actually contacted me on Twitter like really fast, and I gave her my number, and she called me right away. So I, I have to thank Pat for being here. OK, will everyone stand up really quick? I, I just want to do a quick thing. Um, so this idea, just stretch it out, right? We've been sitting, got some lunch. OK, so if you did not sleep last night, have a seat. OK, wow. All right. If you did not sleep, see me. I have a, a really awesome travel pillow. I, I promise I'll give it to you. OK, if you slept one hour last night, have a seat. Two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, five, we're losing a lot of people. Six, five more, seven, eight. Is anyone still standing? Nine? Awesome. Ten? It's ten? OK, awesome. Big, big round of applause for you. That's great. Also, see me, I have something special for you, too. OK, so last thing. OK, raise your hand if you had a dream last night. Now keep your hand raised if you can remember it. Oh, wow, that's awesome. OK, uh, find me, I have something special for you guys, too. <laughs> what we've done is we can, uh, we can take audio files and we can 3D print them into things. So I'll 3D print your dreams, just find me. OK, so I've always been very excited about dreaming. Um, this idea that for one third of our lives, our bodies are suspended and our conscious minds are free from the limits of reality. So everyone on the planet dreams three to five dreams per night. In 95% of all those dreams are forgotten in the first five minutes of waking up. So what if we could create a space for these dreams to self-organize and give us real information about our consciousness? You know, that voice in your head that lets you know you exist. Actually, it lets you know that you're in this room right now your consciousness right there. So we're proposing to create the largest dream database in the world and create a space for these dreams to self-organize. Um, we're going to pick up where Freud and Jung left off and leverage the 50 plus years of technology that's put rovers on Mars and supercomputers in our pockets. So a little bit, a little bit about me. Let's see if this works. All right. so. <laughs> I spent 12 years aggressively working in the fashion industry. I was not sleeping at all. I would average about three to five hours a night for consistently 12 years. I took my first vacation in 12 years to this place here. This is Tulum, Mexico. It is beautiful. The beach there is so nice. Essentially, you have this like Mayan ruin on one side, and on the other side, you have this biosphere that's protected and unpreserved. So I get to Tulum, Mexico. I check into my hotel. It's a Tuesday. I go to sleep at 4 p.m. Um, I wake up at 6 p.m., except it's 6 p.m. on Wednesday. I essentially slept 26 hours. I haven't, hadn't slept that much since probably like the fourth grade, I think. So <laughs> I was in Tulum for 22 days. Um, I slept more than I was awake, and I would have these really epic dreams, and they were fantastic. The thing about these dreams, though, I, they would be gone as soon as I woke up. Um, so I searched the App Store, and I wanted to find an application which I could kind of put, this, put these dreams, because I thought if, if I would just go back to my regular job or my reg regular work, then they would just literally be washed away. So I went to the App Store. There was nothing really that, that was that amazing, everything really basic. And we had been doing a lot of work in fashion, so I'm like, well, we could probably build something that had the user experience and user interface that we're used to. You know, and I thought, if, if I can build iPad applications for Stella McCartney, maybe, maybe I can build this, right? Um, so we assembled a team of sleep scientists from Harvard, Berkeley, and MIT. And we are cognitive neuroscientists, we're neuropsychologists, and we're technologists who are really interested in bringing this into the real world. And our idea is called... Oh, here's all the people. <laughs> They're awesome, yeah, six PhDs, uh, Harvard Medical School, MIT, just awesome people. I hope everyone meets them one day. They're really, really cool. OK, so 95% of all dreams are forgotten in the first five minutes of waking up. Uh, we believe that modern alarm clocks destroy dreams because they rip you through what's called your hypnopompic sleep state. And this is a state between sleeping and waking. So we've created an escalated alarm that gradually pulls you through your hypnopompic sleep state. 
um, and is ready to record when you turn off the alarm. So you literally turn off the alarm, you can speak or text your dream into the application. If you do audio, we'll transcribe into text, and then we'll pull out the keywords. From there, we'll push the whole dream to big data cloud, so we can anonymously organize the global data to identify major themes and trends. So, yeah, <laughs> all right. Cool. So I, I live in New York, and I unfortunately lost my apartment in Hurricane Sandy. And uh, I, I went there, and there was literally four feet of like, water stains when I walked in the apartment. It was crazy. Anyway, so, so then it got me thinking, like, um, you know, what, like, was there an increase of rainy weather dreams before Hurricane Sandy? Or like, like, how does barometric pressure affect dreams? Or like, were the dreams different from people who lost a house and didn't lose a house? I'm just going to speed forward here a little bit. Um, yeah, or were the dreams different from people who lost a house and didn't lose a house? So then I'm thinking about like, what if you dreamt about a white horse last night? And then we could say like, this is the seventh white horse dream you had. Last, uh, uh, this year, and then we could say like um, you are one of 7,000 people who had a white horse dream, and then we can create this little kind of community of people that can then communicate about that and say like and figure out what that white horse dream meant to them. So Carl Jung's amazing. He thinks that uh, that we're all kind of connected in a certain way, and um, we're really excited. Yeah. So. The Japanese sleep the least, but do they dream the least? Um, or what do women at TED dream about? Or what do kids in Sao Paulo dream about? We think this is a huge data set that's literally being forgotten every night. Um, so I'll leave you with this final thought, and it's an idea from, from John Lennon. And what he says is, a dream we dream alone is only a dream. A dream we dream together can be a reality. So thank you very much.